kind of winding down and Mike has fired me as a painter so he got a different painter and, and uh, so I didn't have to go paint. And so this week I'm like, we're getting ready, to, getting ready to teach again. I actually had a good bit of spare time so I was all pumped, studied quite a bit. Uh, and then on the way here, um, Harry, for whatever reason, decided to ask, hey, where are you teaching tonight? And I told him, uh, Joshua 23a. And, he, and he's like, you know you're teaching Joshua 22, right? <laughs> so I have studied the snot out of 23, but we're in 22 tonight. So we're going to open up the Word. <laughs> and we're going to see what the Lord has to say in 22. <laughs> Uh, say what? <laughs> no, I, t Tom's got a nice chart there that I looked at, and I saw 23A. No, no, I'm 22. I'm 22. I looked at it on the way right after Harry said that, and I'm like, how on earth did I see 20? It's, I didn't even print out my notes at this point, so we'll just we'll just go with 22. Okay. Um, at the end of 21, we're going to read, start with 44. The Lord gave them rest all around according to the, all that he had sworn to their fathers, and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. And this is where 22 obviously kicks off. 22, uh, I'm going to read it through real quick and then we'll go back. But it, it basically, this is uh, the Reubenites, the Gadites, half the tribe of Manasseh. They're coming. Uh, Joshua is going to call them and, and they have fulfilled their time, if you recall, uh, or, or to bring you up to speed, as they, they went to Moses back in... Um, uh, numbers 32-ish. Let's go to Numbers 32 real quick. Back in Numbers 32-ish. Um, now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, that is Numbers 32, and a very great multitude of, sorry, had a very great multitude of livestock. And when they saw the land of Jazir and the land of Gilead, and indeed... The region was a place for livestock. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spoke to Moses, to Eleazar the priest, and to the leaders of the congregation. Athroth, Dibion, Jazir, Nimrah, Heshbon, Eliali, Eli, Eli, Shabam, Nebo, Bion. The country which the Lord defeated before the congregation of Israel is a land for livestock. And your servants have livestock. <laughs> this looks like a place for us. So they look, they look out on this side of the Jordan River before they go over and they say, man, this looks like a good place for sheep. What do you know? We have sheep. I think we'd like to stay here. So they ask if they can stay. Uh, Moses tells them that you, fine, you can stay. You can pitch your tents. You can, you can set up your, your, the land for the livestock and your, your wives and kids. But you know what? You guys, you guys need to go. And, and at first... I'm not going to read this whole section. Moses is quite angry with them. He's like, do you remember why we've been here for 40 years? This is Joel's loose version. Do you, do you, why we've been here for 40 years? We sent people in to, to spy out the land, and they came back, and, and they disheartened the people of Israel, Israel with the report. And now you want to say, I don't even want to go. We don't want to go in there. We want to stay here. It's so nice here. You're going to wind up disheartening them again. Again, this is Joel's loose version of what's... 32 is and so um, but then they explain no we'll set this up for our family and then we'll go and we'll fight until it's done and so Moses says okay you men go ahead and set it up for your families but you're going to fight until God has given rest to the other uh, nine and a half tribes so um, and that's kind of where, where this where we kick off uh, if, you, if we read in Joshua 1 also right before they're getting ready to go into the land, verse 12, and if you remember Joshua in 10 said, Then Joshua commanded, 110, commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp 
and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is given you to possess. And the Reubenites and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh, and to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, Remember the word which Moses, a servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God has given you rest. He's always, and that word rest there is, he settled you. He, not, not that there's not work to do, not that they're kicking their feet back, chilling, but you've been settled here. Uh, so, that, so he's given you rest here. <coughs> And has given you this land, your wives, your little ones, your livestock shall remain in the land which the Moses gate which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan, but you shall pass before your brethren armed, all your mighty men of valor, and help them, until the Lord has given your brethren rest, that same rest as he gave you, and they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God has given them. So once he's settled them in their portions of land. Um, so back to 22, and I'm going to read through. That's kind of the, the backboard of where we get to here. Because 21 ends with, and God gave them rest and had given them the land that they, the rest of the tribes, the land that he had promised them. No, not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Then Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh. I'm in 22, 2. And said to them, You have kept all that the Lord, geez, that the Lord, that, nope, that's not it, still it, that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that I have commanded you. You have not left your brethren these many days up to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given rest to your brethren as he promised them. Now, therefore, return and go to your tents and to the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But take careful heed to do the commandment of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away. And they went to their tents. Now half of the tribe of Manasseh, now to half the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given a possession in Bashan. But to the other half of it, Joshua gave a possession among their brethren on this side of the Jordan, westward. And indeed, when Joshua sent them away to their tents, he blessed them. And he spoke to them, saying, Return with much riches to your tents, with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, with very much clothing. Divide the spoils of your enemies with your brethren. So the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel at Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they had obtained according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And when, they had, and when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh built an altar there by the Jordan, a great impressive altar. I think the King James says imposing. Do we have King James in here? Is it imposing? To see to, okay. A great, a great impressive altar. Now the children of Israel heard someone say, Behold, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh have built an altar on the frontier of the land of Canaan in the region of the Jordan on the children of Israel's side. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered together at Shiloh to go to war against them. Then the children of Israel sent Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, 
the priest to the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, and to the land of Gilead. And with him ten rulers, one ruler each, from the chief house of every tribe of Israel, and each one was the head of the house of his fathers among the divisions of Israel. Then they came to the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, to the land of Gilead, and they spoke to them, saying, Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord. Notice they've divided. <laughs> we are the whole congregation. You're not right now. That the t- What treachery is this that you have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord? In that you have built for yourselves an altar that you might rebel this day against the Lord. Is the iniquity of Peor not enough for us from which we are not cleansed till this day? We still aren't cleansed from Peor. Although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord, but that you must turn away this day from following the Lord, and it shall be. If you rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be angry and the whole angry with the whole congregation of Israel. Nevertheless, if the land of your possession is unclean, then cross over to the land of the possession of the Lord, where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and take possession among us. But do not rebel against the Lord, nor rebel against us by building yourselves an altar besides the altar of the Lord our God. The altar that God wanted them to build was in Shiloh. Do not Achan, the son of Zerah, oh, sorry, did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation, and that man did not perish alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh gathered And, excuse me, and half the tribe of Manasseh answered and said to the heads of the divisions of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, He knows and let Israel itself know if it is in rebellion or if, it, or if in treachery against the Lord, do not save us this day. If we have built ourselves an altar to turn from following the Lord or if to offer on a burnt offering, or grain offering, or if to offer peace offering on it, let the Lord himself require an account. But in fact, we have done it for fear, for a reason, saying in time to come, our descendants may speak to your descendants, saying, what have you to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord has made the Jordan a border between you and us, your children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and you have no part in the Lord. So your, de- do- so your descendants would make our descendants cease fearing the Lord. Therefore, we said, let us now prepare to build ourselves an altar, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between you and us and our generations after us, that we may perform the services of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings, with our sacrifices, and with our peace offerings, that your descendants may not say to our descendants in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. Therefore we said that it will be when they say this to us or to our generations in time to come, that we may say, here is the replica of the altar of the Lord which our fathers made, though not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness between you and us. Far be it from us that we should rebel against the Lord and turn from following the Lord this day to build an altar for burnt offerings, for grain offerings, for sacrifices, beside the altar of the Lord, which is before his tabernacle. Again, that's in Shiloh. Now when Phinehas, the priest and the rulers of the congregation, the heads of the divisions of Israel, who were with him, heard the words that the Lord of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the children of Manasseh spoke, it pleased them. Then Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, said to the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the children of Manasseh, this day we perceive that the Lord is among us, because you have not committed this treachery, 
against the Lord. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and the rulers, returned from the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, from the land of Gilead and the land of Canaan, to the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought back word to them. So the thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God. They spoke no more of going against them in battle to destroy the land where the children of Reuben and Gad dwelled. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad call the altar witness, for it is a witness between us that the Lord is God. Back to the beginning of the chapter. Probably going to go down through about 10 in discussion today. How are we doing time wise? 728. All right. Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh. Man, say that seven times fast. We said that a lot in this chapter. Half the tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You have kept all that, the, that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. So I'm going to, just as a side note, as, as we kind of look through this, as you, one thing I've noticed about Joseph, I made mention of it earlier, it is all throughout 23. You'll see when Jim teaches it next. But Joshua is constantly pointing to the Lord. Constantly pointing to the Lord. Everything he said, the, the Lord God did, the Lord did this, the Lord did this. Moses through the Lord did this. And so it's, it's interesting to me that God used this man who seemed to have been full of fear, if you recall from early parts of his calling into leadership, that God had to remind him often. Even, even at the in verse 1, or excuse me, chapter 1 of Joshua, even, even Gad, even the Reubenites and the Gadites said, whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your word and all that you command, command him, talking about their own people, if, if our own people, the leaders of these other tribes, came and said, they'll, they'll be put to death. They're going to follow you just like they followed Moses. Only be strong and of good courage. They had a concern, seems like, that Joshua might be a little shaky, but, but in Joshua's shakiness, his weakness, he kept on pointing to God. He kept on pointing to his leader. He kept on pointing, never, never pointing back to himself of, of his greatness, but always of the Lord's greatness and the Lord doing the work in people's lives and the Lord doing the work in Israel and the Lord going before Israel, and the Lord being behind Israel. And I just think that's an awesome picture of God is great in our weakness. Is he not? You have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice, and all that I commanded you have not left your brethren these many days up to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God these many days. This has been about seven years. This is seven years from the time of Joshua 1 when Joshua says, hey, let's go. It's been almost seven years that they've been, we don't know if there is some type of rotation in and out. I, I don't know. But the, it's been a very long time that they have been fighting and they have kept their word Many have probably, you know, some have probably been lost in battle. They don't know the necessarily count, but been lost in battle. And they kept fighting with their brother until, until they had fulfilled their word. And uh, for me, that's a reminder of the importance of your word. Of when you, <laughs> when you say, I'm going to do this, make sure it's something you can do. And that's, you know, that's a... A struggle, you know, transparently that I've that I've had throughout my life is a is the desire to say yes, 
and not, not knowing if I can back that up with actually getting it done. I truly desire to do this thing that, that I said that I'm going to do. But it's very important that we say we'll do, we, we do the things we say that we'll do. Imagine if uh, this would have been a different scene altogether had they left at some point and said, forget you guys. Instead, Joshua is blessing them, calling the Lord's blessing over them because of they, they kept the word which they had given. They had done all that Moses and Joshua had commanded them. But then he gives them a warning. Because we're going from a, a time of conquering, a time of uh, war, to a time of rest, to a time of, you know, building a family, building a home, building peaceful, t- peaceful times. But take careful heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses a servant of the Lord commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. And I think it's, we currently live in relatively peaceful times in our country. It's getting stranger, for sure. Uh, I think we be blind to not say that there's certainly wars and rumors of wars going all all around the world and even in our own even in our own land but all of us have generally grown up in peace and and I think that that temptation because of that is to focus on um, is tends to take our focus off the Lord it, it it tends to take you know well, let me set up my retirement. Let me do this. Let me think about this. Let me think about, you know, and we, not that retirement's a bad thing. Not that I'm not, that's not the point. The point is, is do we lose focus in our commitment to following the Lord because it's easy now? Because there's no major challenge we have to step over because we don't have that battle right in front of us. And some, some of you certainly do have a, a battle right in front of you. And so everything is not about a political peace. There's sometimes that spiritual warfare going on. But when you find yourself on the other side of a, a big battle, do you, this is that warning for us really. But take careful heed. Take careful heed to do the commandment of the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways. And you know, you, I don't think you can separate those. Those aren't two separate things. That is one continuing thought, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all your ways. I think it's often in the church today that you hear a lot about lovey, 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 I love God, I love, love, love God, and they turn around and living in sin you can't we slip into sin we sometimes fall but we can't walk in sin and love and claim to love God we can't say this is okay I'm okay with this sin this is my sin I'm gonna walk in it oh I love God I love Jesus hey no we we must if we love God walk in all his ways there's grace this is the book of Joshua, Yeshua, the Lord's salvation. This is not, there's, there's certainly grace. That's not what I'm talking about. But the, it is important that we love God and walk in all his ways to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him. And to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. I heard a, uh, I think I texted some of you guys, but I, anyway, I was listening to a John Corson teaching, um, actually preparing for uh, 23, and he, he had this interesting quote of, not a quote, it's a, just a kind of a saying that if you get good at excuses, you're no longer good for anything else. 
when, when you're good at giving excuses, you're no longer good at anything else. And that's, you know, that's, I don't know if that smacks anybody else, but that's like, ooh. <laughs> For me, that's, hmm. What excuses? What excuses do we like to whip out instead of serving the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with, you know, and doing the things as he asked us to do? Moving on. And so Joseph blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. Now half the tribe of Manasseh, Now half the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given the possession of Bashan, Bashan, but on the other half, but to the other half of it, Joshua gave a possession among their brethren on this side of the Jordan, westward. And indeed, when Joshua sent them away to their tents, he blessed them and spoke to them, saying, "Return with much riches to your tents, with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, with very much." Clothing, divide the spoil of your enemies with your children. Excuse me, with your brethren. So the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half, half the tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel at Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they had obtained according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh. And I got to shorten that some way. The, R, the RGM crew or something. Reuben, Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh built an altar there by the Jordan, a great, impressive altar. Now this, this was built... Let me read this second, this 11. Now the children of Israel heard someone say, which is always what we should take and react with a big explosion. They heard someone say, Behold, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh have built an altar on the frontier of the land of Canaan in the region of the Jordan on the children of the Israel side. So this is not on the side. So they, we don't, don't know if they stopped on the way, built it, and then crossed over into Gilead, or they crossed over. Hey, hon, we're going to go back over and build it. Don't know how, how the process went, but they built it on their side. So it would seem, seem to think, if you think about it, we're not going to build it on the other side of a river if this is going to, we're, we're going to start sacrificing on this altar. You'd think you'd build it on your side. But someone said, so, <laughs> so because someone said, they got together a big delegation, right? And they, they became very miffed by what they heard someone said. And my point, the point I just wanted to kind of draw out of this is <sighs> we need to be careful <laughs> just because someone said these are these are people who just spent seven years keeping their word fighting with them side by side in arms not seeing their families and because someone said now all of a sudden they're ready to go to battle against them because they built an altar it is true there the god didn't want other altars that that people were sacrificing on but when people do, when a brother or sister does something that you don't understand, the best bet is not to gather a big crowd and go to them and, why are you doing this? Probably just take somebody and go, hey, this, we don't quite understand why this is going on. <laughs> somebody said, somebody said. And, and notice how quickly... There's a reality that, that the enemy wants to divide the church. He wants to divide me and Denny. He wants to divide me and Steve. He wants to divide our hearts from one another. And the minute there's a little bit of separation, somebody's going to stick their toe in there, and they're going to say something. Man, 
have you been over this other place? Or have you heard what's going on there? Have you? Someone said that's not a reason for us to freak out as followers of Christ. We need to be people who are level-headed. We go and, and search out the truth. We go, Matthew 18, hey, you know what? I see something going on. Yeah, Matthew 18 is specifically a conflict between us. But you know what? You can follow that model. And I'm, I see something weird in Denny's life. I need to go talk to Denny. Not tell 13 people, but did you see what Denny was doing? I don't know about that guy. That guy's sketchy at best. Let's all go. Let's go raid his house. If, if, there, if you talk to him, and it's something, I, I don't know how many times that, that I've counseled, been brought into a situation to, to talk to somebody, and it's not, when you get the other side of the story, <laughs> it's always different than you really think it is. It really is. There's always two sides to understanding, or potentially even more sides to understanding. So we as men... with other brothers and sisters, with um, our wives. Wives tend to be very emotional. We need to bring that steadfastness. Oh, okay, somebody said, did you shut that gossip down? Did you maybe go to that person that somebody said something about and figure out more? We need to bring that steadfastness into our home. We're the leaders of our home. God has called us to be a leader, you to be a leader, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Congratulations, you have been called to be a leader. You are a dude. All right. I'm going to knock off there and I will have studied for next week. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that your word is, is useful and doesn't need my <laughs> uh, intellect or anything else to make it good for us and to, and to help it uh, mold us and to shape us into the image of your Son. And God, I just pray, Lord, that uh, my brothers here would continue, Lord, in whatever phase of, of battle they may be in, they may be in a time of rest. They may in a, be in a time of spiritual battle. Lord, that you would help them, Lord, to continue seeking you out, to continue loving you and obeying you in all your ways. And Lord, I just ask you, Lord, for a fresh... Uh, conviction, Lord, on each one of us, God, that, that may have strayed in certain areas of our lives, that, that we have allowed to callous over your conviction. Lord, please, by your grace, reveal it to us again, that we might respond and have that gift of repentance. We thank you, God, that you are merciful. God, I thank you for each one of these men. I just pray, God, that um, you would give them a renewed a filling of your spirit, a renewed love for you. And help them, Lord, to see those in their, in their daily walk at work and neighbors and whatnot, God, that they can maybe just reach out to and love on. I just pray you'd put that person on their heart right now, that you are preparing, Lord, uh, for your touch. And I thank you for my brothers. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, God, that he bore the cross 
Lord, that we might be perfect in your eyes. You bore the stripes that we could be healed. Lord, we thank you for him. In Jesus' name.